Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Monster Tamer Showcase. Today we're going to be looking at Cassette Beasts. Now, I am recording this prior to the Monster Tamer news segment that will be out before this video launches. Uh, so you may have already been introduced to Cassette Beasts uh, on a more basic note. Um, but we're going to be going over the, the trailer and then we're going to be going over the website to see sort of what this game has to offer. And from what I've seen... Um, it's looking it's looking pretty good i actually haven't seen the entire trailer yet i've been saving that for this so we're gonna go through the trailer and then we'll go to the website the website's got a lot of stuff going on i could see myself making a lot of video topics about this game Uh, I, I don't know what that was, but uh, it looked like this this lady just transformed into a cassette monster. Uh, basically, uh, I, I guess I should have done a better job of overviewing this. This is another sort of uh, monster tamer game that's going to focus on uh, double battles. Uh, basically, you can transform into the monsters yourself, so th there you go. I don't know, the lady the lady monster with the TV on her head kind of looks creepy to me, but I like the little pylon guy over there. <laughs> Combine any monster forms with the fusion system. So yeah, basically you transform into the monsters. I'm curious as to how this is going to work with uh, wild battles. Like, are the wild ones just going to be something that you capture and then become? So yeah, it is an open world game, uh, according to this. So that's interesting. And also with the fusions, there's apparently like, I can't remember how many combinations, but there's thousands of combinations of fusions apparently. Form relationships to empower your fusion. That thing looks that thing looks sick can you catch that <laughs> i want that on my team it doesn't even look like it's uh in the game graphics like <laughs> it looks so realistic so yeah it was it was a short trailer it's by a uh, byton studio um it looks a little wonky if i'm being honest like it looks kind of kind of strange but it also seems to have its own charm. I'm really curious to see how this is going to sort of play out. Um, I've never really been a whole fan of the whole you turn into monsters thing, but I, I like, like that's uh, been a talking point with like what Pokemon might one day do with the whole rebirth thing. And I was kind of one of the people that were totally against it. But I'm going to have an open mind because this is its own franchise. It's not like uh, what Pokemon would be changing the lore if it did that. So I'm going to have an open mind with stuff like that. Uh, I am going to pan over now to the website. So over here on the website, I got us on the uh, overview section. And I'm just going to read off some stuff. There's a lot of stuff on this website. And I think I'm going to do a separate video for certain aspects, uh, just like I do with other monster taming games. Uh, more scripted aspects, too, because there's a lot that I don't really understand just yet. Uh, especially the type chart. The type chart's really interesting. And how the types actually interact with each other. It's not simple um, multipliers, but we'll, we'll, we'll touch on it. So, Cassette Beasts. Grab your cassette player and it's time to transform. Collect awesome monster forms to use during turn-based battles in this indie open world RPG. Combine any, keyword here, any, two monster forms using Cassette Beasts fusion system to create unique and powerful new ones. Welcome to New Whirl, a remote island inhabited by creatures you've only dreamt of, nightmares you hopefully haven't, and a cast of brave folks who use cassette tapes to transform in battle. Okay, so this is like some sort of island that you get you get stuck on, and this uh, concept of people transforming and stuff is foreign to you, so 
I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's going to end up being a dream or something. Who knows? The you know, lore video coming soon. <laughs> To find a way home, you'll need to explore every inch of the island and record monsters uh, to tape. Oh, and record monsters to tape to gain their abilities. So, so maybe you don't actually capture the monsters. You, uh, you record them, and then you can use those same abilities later. So there's a few tabs here. Um, it's cool. I, I like the images. Transform into monsters using retro cassette tapes. Faced with a constant threat of monster attack, the residents of Harbortown, New World, choose to fight fire with fire. Record a monster to tape, then play it back to take on its form for battle. Put in the tape and listen to it. Don't ask how it works, it just does. <laughs> Fuse monster forms. Getting close to your companion has benefits. While transformed, you can combine uh, your strengths to gain the upper hand in battle. Any two monster forms can be fused to produce a unique fully animated new fusion forms that's a lot of combinations there is a way for us to combine our strengths and win this explore a rich open world certain monsters and abil certain monster abilities can be used in human form you'll need these to help you get around solve puzzles locate dungeons uh, glide fly swim climb dash go invisible or turn magnetic so basically hms or or, or more more similarly uh, since they have a lot of a wider variety of things, it's like getting a certain item in Zelda. Like the magnetic thing kind of reminds me of the iron boots from Twilight Princess. Go invisible is kind of cool. There might be some sort of like uh, area where you need to use stealth. Okay, don't freak out, but you're in a different world now. Travel alongside a diverse cast of human companions. Never fight alone. Form bonds. Spend time together and help your selected partner complete personal goals to become a better team. The strength of your relationship determines how well you're able to fuse so this is going to be something that i think will add a sort of level of uh realism to the game uh having sort of like like me personally i, I don't really care for stuff like this like it's just me i'm not saying it's a bad thing it's just that, that i just i'm just not into that but i do think it would add a level of uh realism to the game where you have to bond with the person you're fighting with it's not like pokemon where you're just kind of like sending out your your pokemon and this isn't just pokemon Tem Tem's the same we're just kind of sending them out and it's like here go go fight for me they like you're actually the fighter and you have to bond with your um partner fighter so interesting stuff it's us out here surrounded by monsters to be honest we need all the help we can get so master a deep battle system take advantage of the elemental chemistry to apply extra buffs or debuffs alongside your attack or even alter your opponent's elemental type so this elemental chemistry thing is very interesting. I will, like I said, go over it in more depth in a future video because it, it can honestly warrant its own video. But the elementary, the elemental chemistry rather is basically the type system. But if you guys have been following Kindred Fates, which if you're on this channel, I'm assuming you are because it's probably the game I cover the most uh, as of recent, uh, that alongside Temtem. But if you follow Kindred Fates, uh, you know that they're not using damage multipliers to uh, count which types are super effective against another. Basically, the types will just counter each other, like in League. So, like, uh, uh, I can't think of a good example off the top of my head, but, like, I don't know, does Garen counter, like, Riven or something? <laughs> I don't really know, but... Or, no, I think Garen counters uh, Darius or something like that. So, basically... It's by the move set that they counter each other, not necessarily by the damage multipliers themselves. So that's interesting. Um, so let's see here. Let's go over to the fusion section. So they actually have a fusion demo, which I thought would be interesting to kind of mess around with. So. They have a few monsters uh, here just as examples, and I am going to be doing a video going over all the monsters too, so look forward to that. Like, like they basically laid everything out perfectly on this website. Like, like it's, it's like they were calling me. They were like, Gym Leader Ed, you need to make videos about this, and here is all the information. Like, like I can make a whole video just doing all of these fusions, like, to be honest. So as you can see, you can pick your guy here, Traffic Crab. I like that name. That's funny. And Spring Heel. Fuses to traf traffic heal. Now, I remember not too long ago, Pokemon Fusions, and I'm not sure if they're still a big thing, but there was a big thing in the art community um, 
about fusing like like creating pokemon fusions and whatnot and i think maybe that this game sort of um wants to uh sort of capture that niche of, of people who are really into the fusion aspect of uh that because it was a really big thing this is really cool like you can literally make whatever combination you want here even two of the same will make something different that's interesting so starter grade and another starter grade make fused starter grade dandelion start a lion it's cool it's interesting so cassette beats headline feature is its fusion system which allows it to generate unique fully animated sprites for any combination of two monsters any of two of the 120 monster forms can be fused there we go remember the number i was trying to come up with 14,000 fusions are waiting to be discovered so they definitely came up with some sort of algorithm to do this uh impressive i must say so try the interactive demo we already did we could uh we could look at a couple more things here uh we'll go back to overview i, I did have something going over the i i was uh, reading something about the types a little earlier press kit grab your cassette player it's time to transform collect awesome monster forms yeah we already said this welcome to new world we've already said this transforms and yep we've already seen all this so elemental chemistry let's check this out so chemistry we've covered the fusion system already which allows you to combine any two monster forms into a powerful into a more powerful form during battle now i want to give you some detail on the chemistry system in cassette beasts in cassette beast chemistry replaces the systems of type effectiveness you typically see in rpgs instead of providing numerical damage multipliers like i just said time matchups generate different status effects these status effects can be beneficial to you if you get it right or to your opponent if you get it wrong this is the type chart okay we got beast type we got glitter type we got glass type we got astral type i think there was like a play yeah there's a plastic type we got types, bro. So how do you read the chart? Basically, after an attack lands on the monster, the type of attack defending monsters are compared. One of four things can happen depending on the color. Green, the defender, gets a buff. The attack was quote-unquote weak against him, not very effective. A buff is a positive status effect, which might increase the defender's stats or give it a temporary, uh, temporary immunity or healing effect. Example, using a fire-type move on a water-type monster gives a shroud of steam that passively heals it. So basically, you get buffed. And the buff is different depending on how the types interact. So that adds a layer of uh, complexity to the to what otherwise would be a simple type chart. That's interesting. I really want to do more research into this, into how each type sort of uh, aligns with it. I don't know what we know so far about this type chart other than what's on the website, but I'm going to have to find this. Yeah, I'm going to have to join this Discord <laughs> and find out. So red, the defender gets a debuff. So an example of that is using a water move on a fire type extinguishes it, reducing its melee and ranged attacks. And then yellow, it's transmuted, changing its type. Different chemistry will apply the next time they're hit. Using a fire type move on a plastic type monster melts the monster, transmuting it into a poison attack, uh, poison type. And then blank is no effect. To gain advantage of battle, you want to use uh, debuffs and buffs. That's obvious. Understanding the system, so. They use Pokemon as an example. We're just memorizing the type uh, effectiveness in terms of uh, type matchups is pretty much more than enough, uh, or just enough rather. Whereas with chemistry, you're gonna not just have to remember how the types interact, but you're also gonna have to figure out how exactly they buff and debuff each other or transmute each other. So there's a extra layer. I, I think they use the uh, they use it like um, something that's simple enough to learn but hard to master yeah they talk about mastery here it's a, it's something that you have to master whereas like just learning about types is something you have to you have to uh just learn uh they talk about typeless moves so some moves have uh just no type at all so they can just hit it's basically like what i think the normal type should be like in in, in pokemon and temtem like i think the normal type should just hit everything neutrally personally but that's just me a glitter type what the frig 
If you're wondering what that row in the yellow is, here's a hint. Think about what happens when you touch things for weeks after you get hit with a glitter bomb. Yes, they get covered in glitter too. That's how it works in Kasebis. Anything you hit with a glitter attack becomes glitter type itself. The column in, of yellow where glitter is defending the opposite, glitter type monsters change to, t to whatever type of attack they received was. There's no natural glitter type monsters and there is only one glitter type attack, glitter bomb. This is just, this is a move you might use when the chemistry system puts you at a severe disadvantage against your opponent. Oh, it's, it's to sort of like bamboozle them. Or if you're just trying to make a sticky sparkly mess irritating everybody. Glass is another fun type, but we'll go into that another time. Okay, so the glitter is just, it, it's like a spreading, it's, it's like a type that kind of just spreads to everything. That's why it's all yellow, unless you use glitter on glitter. So chemistry versus uh, damage multipliers. I mentioned delaying mastery as one advantage of this chem uh, of this chemistry. There's actually several reasons we decided to try it out. It helps give certain types and monsters a strong personality. Glass, glitter, and plastic all have really strong personalities thanks to the mini mechanical narratives that can be told with chemistry effects. It encourages synergistic strategies with your partner, the right choice of types, monsters, and moves you might uh, gain access to, a huge set of status uh, effects to inflict even though you might only have a few moves between you. And finally, a lot of the decisions that were made for the battle system uh, were to come uh, come down to whether it helps us balance the battle in context of an open world game. Frequently, we're finding that part of the answer is shifting slightly away from purely vertical, i.e. Numer uh, numerical progression and towards a mastery and horizontal systems of progression. Yeah, like <laughs> there's a lot to, uh, there's definitely a lot to uncover with uh, cassette beasts here um it looks in my opinion really good uh i'm gonna add it to the wish list right now boom added to the wish list uh as soon as a demo comes out we'll play it as soon as uh i didn't even i don't think this thing even had a kickstarter it is coming in nintendo switch i probably covered that in my uh news video i'm assuming i did and yeah, like, like, let me know what you guys uh, think about Cassette Beasts. Um, is this something you're interested in? Uh, is this something you're you're a little uh, put off by because of the type complexity? Let me know. I, I'm actually really interested in this game. I, I'm more interested now after seeing all this than I was at the beginning. Like, like even the uh, the overworld graphics are nice. Like, yeah, it gives you that kind of Pokemon vibe, but they, they sort of uh, shifted the perspective a bit, and I think it looks pretty cool. Some of the monster designs, like, like they do look strange, but I think that's the point. Like, they're not supposed to look like, uh, like, look at this thing. Look at this thing. I love it. They're not supposed to look like natural animals. There's, there's something weird going on on this, uh, on this island. And, um, the fact that they're, they're, uh, these powers come from cassettes, I, I think that's going to have something to do with the story. But, yeah, it's interesting. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And follow me on Twitter at GymLeaderEd. And um, join our Discord server. I'm going to add a Cassette Beast channel. I probably already did by the time you're watching this. But uh, yeah, I w I'm really curious to know what you guys think. So let me know in the comments below. And like I said, subscribe for more Monster Tamer content. Until next time, peace.